Welcome to the Philips Respironics E30 Getting Started Training video. Today we're going to go through the simple and easy setup of a new patient. The device itself, as you can see in the front, has a control dial, a screen, and on top, a therapy on-off button. You can also see that it comes with a humidifier installed. The humidifier is meant for a non-invasive patient. What we're going to do here is actually remove the humidifier. Simply press the button, gently pull apart, and we're going to put that humidifier aside. If you're going to be using the device invasively, make sure you use an external humidifier or an HME. As we turn the device around, you're going to see the humidifier connection, your air outlet, and your power connection. What we're going to do now is actually go through one of the side panels here. The device is capable of actually delivering up to 60 liters of oxygen through a dedicated oxygen inlet port. We're going to install that now. Simply open the side door, remove the blue filter. It's optional to remove the door. All you have to do is pinch this and slightly lift up. Then you're going to take the new inlet and install that. Just push that in, make sure it's nice and flush on both sides here with the device itself. We want to add a bacteria viral filter onto the end here, because this is going to be your air inlet. Then th remove this cap or just open it and you can connect your oxygen tubing. Make sure to not turn your oxygen on until the device itself has been turned on. Next, we're gonna go through how to apply power to the device. Flip it over, take your power cord with the cord clamp, connect that in here. Then you have to take the screw and your screwdriver and tighten that. Flip the device back over, take your AC power cord and connect that to your backup UPS, uninterrupted power supply. Ensure to plug it in in the back row as these are connected to the backup battery. Next, plug in the UPS to the wall and ensure that the power is on. You want to ensure that the UPS and the device are at least two meters apart and that there's no other equipment connected to the UPS. If you want to learn how to use the EAM, the external alarm module, refer to the OIS or the Quick Start Guide. Next, we're gonna go through an example circuit setup for the device. You'll need tubing, a bacteria filter, and an exhalation port. This also is referred to as a leak valve. This is needed if you're going to be ventilating with a non-vented mask or for any patient invasive. What you do is you just take the tubing, connect it to the back, the outlet port. Now you're going to connect your exhalation device and your filter. Placing this filter here is going to work for the inhalation and the exhalation. Now we're gonna go through how to navigate the menu. Use the control dial, select therapy, and you can see all of your different therapy modes and options. Currently we're on ST mode. This is a spontaneous time mode where you set an IPAP and an EPAP. The difference between IPAP and EPAP is your pressure support you also set a breath rate and an inspiratory time. This breath rate is only active if the patient ceases to breathe spontaneously within the time window, then they will get a timed or a mandatory breath based on the inspiratory time. We're gonna go through S mode. That's another one of the options here. In S mode, that's a spontaneous mode where you don't set a mandatory rate, you just set an IPAP and an EPAP. Now CPAP. CPAP, you only set one pressure, that's your continuous positive airway pressure. And finally, in pressure control. In this mode, you set an IPAP, an EPAP, a breath rate, and an inspiratory time. The breath rate is the minimum breath rate you get throughout the entire minute, and every breath is at the set inspiratory time. So if we like these settings, we can start therapy like this, or what we're gonna do is just scroll over, change our IPAP to the desired level that we want, 
Now what we're going to do is scroll down to our main menu and set up our alarms. There are three audible alarms that you can set. They also have visual indicators as well. So you've got the option for a patient disconnect alarm, apnea alarm, and low minute vent alarm. What we're going to do here is set our low minute ventilation alarm. Go back to our main menu. We are ready to start therapy. Let's take a look at how we can set up the circuit with a number of different patient situations. So in this case, we've got an intubated patient. We can connect a trach adapter with an HME, and that can connect easily to the circuit that we already have with our bacterial volatile filter and our exhalation port. If we want to connect to a patient with a non-vented mask, we want to, you can use the same circuit with a bacterial volatile filter, an exhalation port, and your tubing. We you connect right here. Even when using a non-vented mask, we want to make sure that there are no leaks around the mask and that the majority of the air is filtered through the filter here. When you're looking at the helmet setup, you want to refer to the manufacturer's guidelines as there are numerous different um, setups with the helmet itself. With this one, you're going to see that there are two ports at the bottom. There is one on the side here that's a one-way valve, and we've got our exhalation set up on the side. So since we've got our exhalation on the side here, you're going to see the filter, the exhalation, and a cap. What we're going to do is remove the exhalation from the tubing. We're going to make sure that we keep our bacterial filter and we can connect that underneath here. Since there are so many ports, you have the ability to insert your oxygen in one of these other ports. It's important to note when you're using a bi-level or ventilator type therapy where you have two different pressures, the triggering and the tidal volume on the screen may be affected. Now that we've set up the device and our circuit, I'm just gonna to connect to a test lung and we're going to start therapy. To start therapy, all you have to do is press the on off therapy button. As you can see from the screen, we're in PC or pressure control in the bottom right hand side, you're going to see whether an I or an E. An I is when you're in IPAP for inhalation, and an E is when you're in EPAP for exhalation. On the bottom left, you've got the unlock symbol, which shows that you are in the provider clinician screen. If you want to see more detailed views, all you have to do is press the on off therapy button again, and you're going to see a different monitoring view. In this case, you're going to see your pressure, your total leak, your min vent, your tidal volume, and your respiratory rate. At the very bottom, you see the active mode that you're using. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend our patient's lung condition changed. And what you're going to notice is our min vent is actually dropping. If you remember, we set our low min vent alarm to five, so once we reach five, you're going to see our low min vent alarm is going off. We have to click to silence that, and you have to click again to clear. In this case, we're going to change our patient's lung conditions back to where they were. You're going to see our min vent is going to slowly increase, and we'll get back to where we were before. You'll also notice on the screen that there is an SpO2. At the moment, there's three dashes, and that's because we don't have our SpO2 equipment connected. So what we are going to do is we're going to rotate the device, open up the side door here, and we're going to connect our SpO2 equipment. Now we're going to connect the SpO2 module. You need a link module, the known and XPod connector, as you can see here, and that connects to a finger sensor. So you need all three pieces in order to get your SpO2. We're going to look around on the front here. We're going to see our SpO2. When you're on this screen, you're going to see it change between your pressures and your SpO2 and your heart rate. Now we're going to discuss how to change the therapy settings or modes while you're actually ventilating. 
All you need to do is change over to your therapy screen. You can see that we're using PC or pressure control mode at the moment. We're going to slide over to your iPad. Let's say we wanted to change this iPad. In this case, we're going to be increasing it. That change won't take effect until you tap your control dial. Now our iPad has increased. If you want to change it back, just tap that again, rotate the dial back to the setting where you're at. Let's say you want to change the actual mode. We're going to change our mode to CPAP. Just by clicking the control dial here to CPAP doesn't actually change the mode. We have to click your on off therapy and activate CPAP mode is going to come up a message, switch to yes, acknowledge that. And now you can see that your mode has changed to CPAP. If you go to the other screen, you're going to see all of your settings. Now, when it's time to stop therapy, all you have to do is press and hold the on off therapy button for two seconds. In addition to the alarms that we discussed earlier, there are three visual indicators available in the detailed monitoring view, providing the clinician with pertinent information for different potential leak scenarios. Leak is less than min vent, leak is less than zero, and excessive leak. The next slides will go into detail around the situations in which these could arise and a corresponding action and resolution.